Here in Crete, we are the most southern winemaking region in Europe. Wine is like uh, fine art. I think it's a way to connect people. Wine is something that has uh, a mystery. Wine, a piece of civilization. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm your host, Fotis Tamos, and along with me, as always, Ari Kalos. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Excellent, Ari. You know, Ari, um, we've had some interesting and amazing guests, uh, and we're very grateful for that. And uh, it just keeps getting better. Uh, we're coming across uh, guests from all over the, the world, not just the US, not just Greece, and what have you. But uh, thanks to social media, our next guest in our program really wowed me based on uh, what she's doing. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about, more about what she's doing and who she is, but I wanted to welcome to our show, Krisa Tordzaki. Hello, Krisa. Hello, hello, thank you for having me. Thank you for taking the time. I'm sure you've got a lot going on. It is during, you know, we are in holiday mode, so I'm sure there's a lot of moving parts for everybody. But um, this is an opportunity for us to actually finally get to speak to you after following you on social media um, and, you know, being fascinated the fact that you're taking the efforts to do something that we're going to talk about that I've been always wondering why hasn't it been done before. So Ari, I'm, I'm sure we've, you know, we've talked a little bit about Krisa uh, directly, but um, Krisa is putting together, uh, and she'll tell us more about it, um, a documentary on the wine culture of Crete. Mm. And, you know, we've touched, up, we've touched upon some of our segments uh, with Crete and Wine. We did a webinar with, um, with Crete and Wine, uh, getting our fans and our audience a little more familiar with the production from Crete. Uh, Crete is a fascinating part of Greece, in my opinion, that produces some of the best products overall, uh, not just wine. And I think this is a great opportunity to get to know Crete a little better uh, with Krisa. That's absolutely correct. And, you know, I am part Cretan, so this touches home for me. And I actually don't know all that much about my heritage. I mean, I've been there when I was young, uh, but my mom passed away um, when I was younger. So I never really got the full effect. And when Foti first introduced me to this, uh, to you through social media, and then we saw your clips, it was absolutely fascinating and, and something I think it, it, like I said, it's close to my heart, but it's, it's something that's so much more. And, and I think everybody out there absolutely has to see what you're doing and has to learn more about this because it's, it's just such a fascinating and wonderful part of the world that produces amazing wines and, and much more than that. Um, but you know what? Let's, let's, yeah. let's talk to, let's talk to Krisa because before, before we get to know a little bit more about Crete and Crete and wine, let's get to know a little bit more about Krisa and yes. tell us, Krisa, you know, where this all started from, you know, you know, what led you to what you're doing today? Maybe give us a little bit about your roots from Greece. Oh, funny, funny that you mentioned the word roots. Um, so I come from a family in Crete where my grandfathers had vineyards and we, all the children, all the family had to attend and help during mm -hmm. harvest time, mm -hmm. which was not that fun after we got a little older and we actually had to to do the actual work because when we were children it was fun we were playing at the vineyard um fast forward to me moving to the u.s five years ago i started tasting different wines from all over the world the u.s is a country where we were lucky enough to have 
wines from all over the world. Oh, yes. And um, I, I got fascinated with the um, idea of wine, wine tasting. I wanted to learn about the history of uh, the wines and uh, the people who made it. I was always fascinated by stories. I was, I had nothing to do with wine though. I was, I studied poli-sci in, in university and then I, I launched my career advising politicians on public speaking and and how, and strategy basically. Branding, the way that we say branding, but for politicians. Nice. <laughs> and um, I never thought I would have an interest in changing careers, but here we are right now. And um, there was a point in, in my in my life here in the US where I said, well, I would like to to turn into wine as, as a career and how can I do that? Now let me ask you this. What was that pivotal point? What actually got into your head that moment? Where was it? It was at a winery in Oregon. Okay. We were tasting Pinot Noir and the the owner, I believe it was the owner, it was a small winery. Yeah. The owner heard us talking Greek and he mm. said, he recognized the language and he said, oh, you're Greeks. That's great. Um, I hope that was a positive. Uh... No, it was not because uh, he was uh, excited. We were Greek, but then he said, yeah, your wines are not that great. Mm. In that moment, I realized this guy has not a clue what the Greek wine industry has done in the past uh, 15, 20 years. So true. And that was not the only guy who didn't know about sure. what Greek wine is all about. And I, what... I want you, I want you so much to become a great success. So you could start off with somebody was messing with your Greek pride and it spurred this whole movement in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a different, it's, it's a different, uh, different things that motivate different people, right? For yeah. me, it was always someone told me that, oh, no, you cannot do this, or um, you're good enough, or who do you think you are doing this? It's like, you know, many, many that great motivates things. me. I'm like, um, yeah, many great things have happened from from that kind of motivation. So I, I, I want this to be your to just, you know, keep doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that was the first time where I felt, hmm, maybe we were not doing a great job as a country in, in Greece, marketing the, the wine aspect of our, of our culture, of our exports, um, and maybe we can do a little better job. Mm -hmm. So I, I yeah. started thinking, how, how can I contribute to this? And let me tell you, being, uh, a young person and a woman and the person who has not a deep knowledge in wine wanting to go into the wine industry it can be really let's say not welcoming mm. it could be it could be intimidating and frustrating at yes the, at the same token absolutely it requires some kind of uh, courage oh yeah uh, to get into uh, the wine industry from from zero and um I have a background in marketing, so I thought, okay, what can I do? So that, that's how uh, Wine Cellar Stories started on Instagram. And I started sharing all kinds so, of wines, not just Greek wines. So, so you, you decided to create an Instagram account called Wine Cellar Stories. Exactly. Okay. And um, I started sharing my thoughts around wine, the wine industry, and slowly started introducing some Greek wines and some wines from Crete. I'm nice. originally from Crete. So that spoke to my heart. And um, I slowly realized that I don't have enough uh, wines from Crete to taste in the US. Mm -hmm. And um, at the same time, I started watching all these documentaries on uh, Amazon, Amazon Video, and I, I noticed um, people were tasting 
wines that they knew the stories oh, of yeah. the certain wines, the sure. people who made it. So there was a point where I saw we lacked that connection, the storytelling with uh, our wines through to, to the consumers. Sure. And, you know, Greek wine in Greece, it's all about the myth. It's all about the story. We have to use that in our yeah. marketing and in our storytelling. You're, that's so true. So true. Uh, we, we, uh, we had a brief conversation not too long with Ari, where there's another colleague of ours that joins us on a lot of our webinars. And uh, her name is the, uh, Dr. Susanna Hoffman, who's um, a notable anthropologist. And her inclusion of the stories that's behind everything that we discuss was a bigger part than the actual sipping of the wine. <laughs> yes. But yes, the, the stories to, to somebody like me who I consider myself like the wine outsider. And that's why Foti and I are a good team because he's the expert, I'm the outsider. Um, he's always kind of teaching me about it. And, and whenever we have guests such as yourself, like I try to play the role of like the person learning about it and hearing the stories to me, I, I love wine, obviously, but hearing the stories makes it so much better. And, and hearing you describe like getting the story with the wine, I, I feel like it's such an important aspect of the whole wine experience and, and absolute what you're doing is, is something that 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 is needed and necessary and we'll get to where where we're going to talk about the documentaries but i just want to say briefly like watching some of these clips i was completely like engrossed in it and and it makes me want to drink more green wine ah mission accomplished <laughs> yeah it, it's i mean it's 100 percent true it's not it's not just something we're saying it's 100 percent true I mean, what better pairing than a good story with a good wine? I mean, exactly. you cannot and, get any better than that. Because yeah, we, surround us, we surround ourselves in general with, you know, socializing, talking, discussing, having conversation around wine. So it obviously makes sense. And, and I also feel that with, with how, you know, society is going with technology and then especially now with a pandemic and, you know, what I wouldn't give to be in an old Greek taverna with an old guy with a wine telling his stories. Like I, I would, I would love to just get that feeling again. I mean, it's great that we could communicate through technology. You know, that's absolutely wonderful thing, but come on, send me to an old Cretan village with an old man, with a bottle of wine and let me hear those stories. And that wine is going to be the best wine I've ever had. Yes. Just make sure they don't give you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That's how it is. So, um, so Wine Cellar Stories becomes um, live. It's growing popularity. You're growing followership. You're posting great content. And then what happens? Uh, then I realized that I need more content and I need to have a focus because I was all over the place with the Greek wines, with the American wines, Italian, French. I wanted to focus and what a better focus than in Crete, but I didn't get to that because by, by myself. Okay. So as fate would ha have it, one of my wine teachers at a presentation, uh, he said, oh, we have uh, pre vines only in Chile. And I said, I raised my hand and I said, no, we have in Crete as well. I remember it. My grandfather used to tell me all the time and he goes no it's only in Chile I don't know anything about uh, Greece but Greek wines are not that good right oh wow, once again <laughs> once again I was shocked because they were telling that to my face <laughs> and plus I was shocked by how how little um, people knew about the quality of Greek wine let alone the varieties and Mm. And the microclimates and all the beautiful stuff that we have in Greece. Um, I've heard from many people that, well, Greece is nice because it's a vacation place, right? It's the beach, the sun. Uh, and I say, no, we also have mountains and great wines and great wineries and go and visit when you can. In the meantime, 
I thought, what can I do to bring Crete to, to the US? And the answer was, let's make a documentary. And that's a, that's a pretty, that's a that's pretty awesome. big, uh, that's a pretty big statement right there because as, as I know, I'm not sure about everybody else, but you know, that's a tall order and you, you set yourself up for some real work. I imagine. It, it was not hard. It, it's not, it's not easy. It's, uh, it hasn't <laughs> been since the beginning. Um, but I'm grateful for every step of the way. I I'm hoping that, uh, you know, with, with my team, we're going to uh, create a really beautiful documentary where it would not only make people want to drink wine, but actually go to the store and buy it, buy it. Right. Right. Or order it online. Now, now we are in these times. <laughs> right. So, so you got the idea, <clears throat> thanks to this teacher of uh, pushing the thought of, you know, we need to do a documentary. So tell us a little bit more about the, you said the team, you created a team and, and how were you able to do that? And, you know, at what stage are you now with, with the, with the production of this documentary? Well, there was nothing professional about me making a team. It was basically a cry for help. I was mm -hmm. like, uh, look, you guys, I need to do that. Uh, and I need your help. Okay. So I hired a videographer in Crete and then I had a lot of volunteers, a lot of volunteers to help with uh, staging the photography and uh, the art director, the, the driver. I mean, I had my mom help, my brother. As it they was say nothing Greece, professional about that. <laughs> like they say in Greece, it took a village to help out. <laughs> exactly. It took a village. But I love it. I love it because there's passion behind it. Oh, from that we have plenty. <laughs> and I, I think I think that would make the best product. If you if you had an unlimited supply of money and hired every single person, I guarantee you that you wouldn't have got as good a product as the people who volunteered because of the passion. The passion and the heart they, they put in it because they really believed in what they were doing. Yeah. Uh, even though we were 12 hour work days in the sun, in the vineyards and um, that that can be tiring if you do it we did it for three weeks oh i can imagine one after the other no yeah. breaks yes wow that's incredible so so you're asking so where are you at right now right now we are fundraising for the editing uh costs of the documentary um the whole production and actually to to go there hire the people and uh, film mm -hmm. it, it was all from personal funds i was gonna say so so you you funded this yourself and yes. unless you're you know some sort of billionaire like there's I'm only not. so far <laughs> there's only so far you could go so it's very important and um before we we finish I w we need you to list where people could find this information and obviously we're going to list it with the podcast and the video as well uh because it's very important that you raise the proper funding to get this out because this is an absolutely wonderful thing that you're doing and and people need to see this so um so now you're you're still in the uh, funding phase correct yes uh, we're fundraising at the same time we're really really slowly editing like as a fundraise i i put some more money into um uh, actually editing the documentary and um, it's are it's still, going, are, it's you going still, are you still filming as well at the same time do you still have to create uh, gather more footage I I did that in October okay. so coming back and uh, reviewing all my footage I saw that I have the wineries I have the the, the storytelling from the owners of mm. the wineries. I have the professor, I, I have a professor of viticulture uh, that spoke about the indigenous varieties on the documentary. I have the master of wine, Mr. L Lazarakis, describing uh, how the wines feel from, from his um, professional point of view. Mm. And I was missing the part where the consumers 
um, speak and taste and speak about the wines. So what I did, I took my little camera and my tripod and my lights and my microphone and I went to different states asking wine lovers that I, I was following through social media mm. if they would taste uh, one white and one re or red yeah. and comment on camera. So I went to New York, New Jersey, Washington, D.C. Wow. and Northern Virginia and Baltimore. Oh, wow. Good for you. And I had people taste the wines they were tasting the wines for the first time and they were commenting about it and i believe that makes the documentary a more holistic approach yeah. it took a more holistic approach because we have the trade and the consumers that that sounds awesome and you know i don't want to tell you how to do your job Krisa, but i think you have to make a sequel with that original professor and original Oregon wine guy <laughs> and show them what's going on right now. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's part two of this documentary. That would be a fun, <laughs> a fun thing to do. Definitely. We could be your actors. We can act like those guys. If you need. <laughs> well, 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 they could definitely act like a old grumpy dude. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but um, just listen to what you're saying. I mean, like, think about it. Ari, from the beginning to where she is now, um, you know, picking up and traveling to destinations just to be able to capture, um, you know, people's perspective on tasting. I'm assuming they were tasting Crete wine for the first time. These for are the, the first, time, first time. Yes. Wow. I mean, that's some serious thought process uh, right there. I mean, and I don't know of anyone currently that I've come across that actually has taken these approaches. And I commend you because it's that's what it takes in the times that we live in to bring a, a, you know, a wine culture to the wine world mm -hmm. where we just mentioned how it's so um, undervalued, overlooked, misinformed, the stigma still irks us as far as the reputation of Greek wine, even though it's getting better um, from, from 20 years ago. Let me tell you, when I decided to take the leap of faith into this and I would go door to door uh, in sales, you know, every, every single, when they say, you know, you get the door shut on you so many times. Um, I was almost immune to the sound of the door getting shut because mm -hmm. it kept getting shut over and over only because unfortunately the only thing that mainly stuck to the consumers here in the U S back in the eighties and nineties for Greek wine was either Retsina or Mavro Daphne. That was our reputation. Yeah. And it's not the consumer's fault. As we mentioned, it's because unfortunately we didn't have the infrastructure uh, the professionalism, the experts to allow Greek wines to develop like they have now. So that stigma stuck around for a while, but we're, 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 we're overcoming that slowly, but surely. And efforts like yours, I think goes a long way that eventually at some point, those, that stigma will be a memory lost. Yeah. I believe that too. And I believe that, um, the social media and how how easily it is to use technology to connect uh, the the trade the wine trade with the consumers the winery the, the consumers have they can access their favorite winery through Instagram, mm -hmm. and that creates a connection we didn't have 15, 20 years or five years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's great. I I, I think. Um, once, in my opinion, uh, your documentary um, gets out there and it's being seen and it gets shared and viewed, I think we're going to see a lot of positive impacts for sure. There's no question about it. Um, no, that, that's for sure. I mean, obviously, you're sitting here in front of me and I'm going to tell you right now, honestly, not because you're our guest and we're speaking to you, but this is 100% right up my alley for something I would be interested in if I just literally came across it somewhere on social media or I got an email from someone, I would be all over this documentary. I mean, obviously I'm Cretan, so right there, but it's, it's not just that I'm Cretan. It's that it's, it's something that I feel I've been missing. Like I, I really love stories. I really love the connection between um, culture and wine 
the stories of culture, the stories of wine, put it all together. Like it, it, that to me is a very enticing and entertaining thing. And I love to learn. So it, it's like a full package. And, and I really truly believe that. Uh, you guys are, are, are in the, the wine trade for a long, a long period of time. Um, do you think that if a consumer watches a documentary and goes to their local wine shop or the, some e-shop and they ask for the wine, they, they would find it? Um, I'll answer that, Ari. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. So that's a very, very good question because this is also have, has been um, a setback for us in the Greek wine world where we've done plenty of events done a, a lot of marketing and we get people excited for the moment and if they don't have access to it when the when the um when the iron is hot as they say then if they do visit their local wine shop and it's not available then there's a disconnect and then that that buzz gets lost what we've been trying to do is we've been trying to uh, make a better connection to keep the buzz alive where we get people excited and the quickest way to make the impact is to connect every type of content social media uh, newsletter film video to our platform so they can purchase it directly and not have to venture out because the the reality is that there's um, some great wine shops around the country that do support greek wines and god bless them for doing that but they represent a very small percentage of retail that has a good selection of Greek wine on the shelf at the moment. And I'm hoping that will change as time goes on. But I think that with our efforts, our goals are, or well, one of the main goals is to be able to have these products accessible. And we believe that the e-commerce is one of the biggest solutions for us at, for us at the moment. And it's, uh, it makes it so easy for the consumer as well. If all they have to do is click a button and, and pay through their phone or their computer, it's... It'd yeah. be great, if not to impose, but it'd be great to have maybe uh, a link in your documentary that after they watch it here, click here to buy Cretan Cre Cre wine. Yeah. Yes. Well, um, I don't think that we are allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah, it was, it was just wishful thinking. <laughs> but yeah, yes, there are things that you can uh, actually say, well, if you want it, you can yeah. find it through here. Yeah. Yes. Or subliminal messages, you know, a quick flash. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, I really want that Cretan wine. But yeah. I, I, I would challenge, uh, I would challenge anybody out there right now, right here. I would challenge you to not have a curiosity and a desire to try Cretan wine after watching her documentary. I challenge anyone and I would love the feedback. If, if, if you could honestly tell us that you don't have the desire to try Cretan wine after watching this, I would love to hear from you. So that's the challenge we're putting out there. Challenge accepted. Well, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, Parisa, so you're, you're, you're in the mode of editing. So you're, you're working on getting your, your footage edited. Anything that you're working on simultaneously in the meantime at, oh, as you're okay. editing your project? Uh, yes, I am. I'm working towards my uh, diploma, uh, WSET diploma, and I was not aware that it would be so much work, but yeah. it is. <laughs> Here we are, um, and uh, and you're preparing for an exam, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, in three days from now, from oh. when we're recording the uh, this podcast, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, yeah, documentary editing and my day job and also the the studying takes a lot of time. Oh, well, we appreciate the fact that you took some time to, to join us because it sounds like you have a pretty full schedule. And honestly, I think it's great that you're so busy, especially during these times. You know, it's better to be busy than not busy. So <laughs> I know no. it's tough on you, but at least it's 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 positive and good. And now, Krisa, do you have a, um, an expected date that you'd like to have the documentary completed and launched? So the goal is to finish the editing in February, start uh, sharing the documentary through different film festivals, and around uh, the fall of 2021, 
to have it released for everybody to watch. And where do you have uh, any knowledge of where it's going to be released or where you want it to be? Through the Amazon video platform. Okay. Mm. So people could so could people can get it right it on demand at home that for free. Yes. Awesome. And uh, I don't know if if the documentary gets any awards through the film festivals and some uh, major distribu distribution distribution channel wants to buy it. I won't say no. Hmm. You know, it's uh... <laughs> why. I mean, absolutely. Why not? It, it, it'll just spur you to to keep moving and keep making and creating. And and I think that would be amazing, especially if you. I, I, I'm going to assume you enjoyed the process as much work as it was. I'm assuming you enjoyed the process, correct? I I did enjoy the process, and uh, part of it was because I was discovering at the same time as I was filming uh, not just the stories but the quality of the wines from Crete mm. I had no idea I had the pride I had the passion I didn't know that Crete had such quality wines I mean we're talking about 11 indigenous grape varieties mm -hmm. and all of them have a distinguishable character that, I don't know, it really well, shows not. the microclimate of Crete and the, the beautiful terroir. Mm. Wow. Excellent. That's so cool. So, okay, so, so right now you are in a funding process. So we're gonna get all that information and we're also gonna link it everywhere. Um, we also have, a, a, we'll, we'll let you know after, we won't get into it now, but uh, we, I think we could help with some of that fundraising as well. And we're gonna, we're gonna Again, link it everywhere. So everybody out there, this is this is a really amazing thing that she's doing. Um, so why don't you give us? Do you have a website? Do you, what's your social media handles everywhere that people could find you? So the website is being uh, built right now, but um, you can find me mostly on Instagram at Wine Cellar Stories. Yeah, and I'll and, link that as well. Yeah, and. Um, you can get all the information from there for the fundraising uh, as well. Uh, but any, any um, uh, extra uh, fundraising, yeah, do I definitely appreciate that you guys. Well, uh, we'll just, dis we'll discuss that before you, before you leave, but absolutely. That's what we're here for as well. Yeah. We, I mean, we, we stories like yours and, and, and what you're doing is, not just interesting to us, but it's also part of everything that we are about. And, you know, without people like you, you know, what we'd be talking about, it would be me and Foti talking to each other and nobody, frankly, nobody wants to do that or listen to that. So it's good that we have people that are passionate, that are doing creative and, and very cool things. I mean, just from the, the little bits that I've seen, it's like, it's so cool. It's so cool. And that challenge stands. I, I, I want to hear from somebody. <laughs> well, we're, de we're definitely going to um, bring back Pisa to our podcast to give us some follow-ups, or maybe we can have you come back when the documentary is ready so that we can let our audience uh, get excited about it. But any, any last minute thoughts, comments that you'd like to share with us before we come to a close? One thing that I would like to share is uh, for people that are inspired to to change their careers and get, get into the, the wine industry is have courage and find something that really speaks to your heart and, and, and go for it. Take an action. I was not prepared to do filmmaking. I learned it along the way. I believe that when there is a will, there is a way. And despite you know being in the pandemic and having all this difficulty traveling, I did the trip to to Crete and it was difficult but you did it yes so this is what I want to say to everybody um, don't be afraid because you don't know something be willing to learn it and then you know go with the flow as they say right well said uh, well said very well said well and drink Greek and wine <laughs> I, it, I would right now, but it's, uh, all, it's still like 10.30 or 11 <laughs> I'll say uh, that never stopped you before, Foti, so. 
<laughs> I don't want to give people the wrong impression. <laughs> But anyway. I mean, th this was amazing. And thank you so much again with your, your crazy schedule for taking the time. Oh, um, no. We're going to get all your information linked Thank you up. for the opportunity. Yeah. And, and, and you know, we're going we're gonna to make it a very big point on our end to, to really get people as much as possible to, to, to know about this, to watch it when it's ready, to hopefully donate because this is something that's very important to our culture so everybody out there make sure um you know in any way you can just just support support these types of people who are creating these amazing things for our culture and our wines and and just taking their time um but thank you again Chisa. we appreciate it and uh and thank you guys Boti? thank you very much thank you very much ari thank you everyone for watching and listening don't forget Follow Frisa at Wine Cellar Stories on Instagram, and we're definitely going to have her back sooner than later. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.